Tom asks, what would make us pay more for our pork? In 18 years of covering farming stories, this is the first time I've been granted access to an intensive indoor pig unit here in Britain. Some people don't like this, but much of our pork is produced this way. Now, animal welfare is an emotive issue. But when it comes to those breakfast basics of bacon and sausage, shoppers tend to buy what's the cheapest, and that often means pigs reared in intensive conditions. Now, Tom has been looking at the contradiction between what we say we want and what we're actually buying. Well, now, old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on his farm, he had a pig, E-I-E-I-O. When it comes to rearing pigs, modern production methods are a world away from the old-fashioned storybook image. But far from just a few piggies in the backyard, the average British commercial herd now has 500 sows, nationally producing more than 9 million pigs a year. It's all to feed a growing population at a price we can afford. The business is efficient, productive and often intensive and some people are increasingly uncomfortable with it but what we say we don't like and what we actually buy are often two very different things most shoppers still choose cheaper conventional pork which generally means it was reared intensively indoors Free range and outdoor bread are marketed as higher welfare, but they do cost more, and that puts some people off. In fact, only around 10% of fresh pork sales are labelled as outdoor bread, and only 2% of British pigs spend their whole lives outdoors. Far from turning our noses up at cheap pork, shoppers are giving it the thumbs up. And as long as that's the case, there will be intensive farms like this one. This is a medium-sized operation with 550 sows producing 12,000 pigs a year. Yet the farmer has asked us not to use her name. She's afraid of being targeted by animal rights activists. So why have you decided to let the cameras in here? I'm very proud of what we do, but I'm conscious that people don't really understand anymore how their food is produced. And I think it's important that people do know how their food is produced and why we do what we do. The sows here give birth in farrowing crates to stop them lying on their own piglets. They're born and raised on slats, plastic flooring with holes to allow muck and urine to fall through. This is one of the more controversial forms of livestock farming, but everything you see here is legal and covered by the red tractor scheme. These sows are in here for 28 days while they have their piglets and until the piglets are weaned. For the rest of the time, they're in big straw yards. When I had my children, I went into a specialist facility and I was looked after with really a high quality of care. This is the same for our sows. That is a really fascinating analogy. For you, this is kind of a maternity unit. Absolutely. And you're able to exercise, you know, maximum health, maximum cleanliness. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And why do you think it is a lot of people have a negative attitude to this style of pig farming? I totally appreciate that people think that animals should be running through fields knee-deep in grass. But I've been doing this for a very long time and I know that my pigs are happy. You can see for yourself that the pigs, all of the pigs in here, are extremely settled. Next, we visit the weaned pigs. These are about seven weeks old, these ones. This does look like a rather boring, barren environment for rearing pigs. This is all specialist pig accommodation to ensure that they are looked after in the best possible way. Pigs are famously intelligent and inquisitive. Do they really have enough to do in here to display, you know, close to natural behaviours? And um, we have toys in the corner of every pen. And, and that's enough for them, is it? Yeah, it is, and they do actually play with them. Right. The natural behaviour is going around and investigating their environment. And just because that environment is different doesn't mean that the behaviour is different. It's just that they're investigating something different. And that pen over there is a, is a really good example. They are all, yeah, if I look over there, they're, they're, milling, they're, they're about. milling about, they're yeah. snuffling against each other, they're yeah. establishing yeah. a pecking they order, are. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
there seems to be a bit of a mixed message here. On the one hand, people are, seem to be complaining about this kind of production. On the other, they're buying more cheap pork. Which message do you listen to? It's very easy for those who have higher incomes, who have the freedom to buy whatever meat that they choose from whatever production systems. But the, the reality of it is, is that most people have a budget which their shopping has to fit into each week. Do you accept that there is, by definition, a, a compromise to the welfare of the pig when you're rearing them in this way? No, I, I, I don't accept it at all. Um, these pigs are happy and they're healthy, and that is the most important thing. But some people disagree. Peter Stevenson is from Compassion in World Farming, which campaigns for better animal welfare on commercial farms. What is wrong with intensive indoor systems, in your view? In intensive indoor systems, pigs are kept in crowded, barren conditions in which, without any straw, so they can't engage in their natural rooting and investigation behaviours. Doesn't the law actually say they need manipulable material and that things like chains and plastic toys can qualify for that? Certainly, in my view, just providing metal chains or plastic objects does not satisfy the law. But outdoor bread or free range is more expensive. Isn't what you're recommending going to make pork unaffordable for many people? Yes, of course, people want affordable pork, but that shouldn't be achieved by rearing um, pigs to low welfare standards. Isn't it the case that consumers say they care about welfare, but in reality, they buy some of the most intensively reared pork in bulk? Yes, and of course this has been a problem for many years, but consumers aren't being given the information they need to make informed choices when they're buying pork and bacon. And Peter is convinced of the solution. He wants clearer labelling, following the example of another shopping trolley staple. Eggs, cage eggs, have by law got to be labelled eggs from cage hens, and this is helped a big move away from cage eggs to free range. We now need a similar law for pigs. But would it really make a difference? I want to understand the contradiction between what we say we want and what we actually buy. Are we telling porkies? That's what I'll be finding out later. Earlier, we saw how pigs are raised on intensive farms. But will that influence what we buy? Here's Tom. It's the pig paradox, the battle between our beliefs and our budget. Three pounds, please. My inner ethical man might say I should go for the free-range organic pork, but my inner consumer might say, hmm, I fancy that value pack. But some people believe consumers would pay more if they had a better understanding of how pork is produced. Kate Morgan farms 75,000 pigs a year in East Yorkshire. Hi, Kate. Hi, Tom, how are you? I'm fine. Am I coming down or are you coming up? I'll come up and save you from getting eaten. All right, thanks. These pigs are reared on straw, not the slats we saw earlier. Yet Kate receives the same standard price. She believes this is a higher welfare system, so she deserves a little more. It cost me a lot more to produce them, so it'll cost me between eight and ten pounds more to produce a pig on straw. Because, one, I have to pay for the straw, I have to pay for the machinery to muck out, I have to pay for the man to muck it out as well. How would you feel if the market realities forced you towards a slatted system? I mean, it is doing it at the moment. Retailers are really pushing us down, producing a pig as cheaply as possible. If that is the way that the retailers push us, we will not be farming anymore. We do not want to farm on slabs. Do you think consumers really will pay a little bit more for this? I'd like to think that some consumers would pay a little bit more and get something that, in my opinion, has had a better life. Kate wants more money for her pigs and trusts that consumers would cough up. But would they? They have to be willing to, to pay the extra, uh, and, and that's going to be a challenge here. Because... David Swales is an expert on consumer behaviour for the Agriculture and Horticulture Development Board. 
customers often say a whole range of factors are important to them, like welfare and, and the environment. But actually, when they get into the store, and it tends to be factors like the, the appearance of the product uh, and the price of the product, which are much more important. What about putting a little more information on the label? So if it was intensively reared, it kind of shows images of that on the pack. A, a small proportion do look for information about welfare, probably about 20%. Uh, and there is welfare information on packs, so the consumer can understand if they're going to pay more, what they're getting for that. There are a lot of labels already out there. And if you find it all a bit confusing, here's a simple guide to pork purchasing with the help of shoppers on Driffield High Street in East Yorkshire. Kicking off with the most basic, no label bacon. There may not be any particular claim around welfare, but we know it's all to the legally required standards. We've got uh, some red tractor product. It means the product is British. There's certain standards around things like safety and traceability and welfare. RSPCA assured. This means the farm has been inspected by the RSPCA to its own stringent welfare standards. Outdoor bread. It means the pigs have been born outdoors and then brought inside to be fattened up before they're sold. Free range. They'll be outdoors for the whole of their lives. And finally, we have organic. These are pigs that have been bred and raised outdoors, uh, but also they've been done so on, a, on an organically certified farm. What we're interested to know is what you lot think you would buy now you've got that information. What would you go for, madam? I would go for free range. You, madam? Yeah, free range for me. Uh, red tractor or RSPCA for sure. I would go for organic. Probably go for the outdoor bread. Outdoor bread. Very good. Hmm. That doesn't really reflect what's happening in the shops. The vast majority of pork sales are the cheaper options, and only 1% are organic. Let's see if people change their mind when I reveal the prices. We've taken an average price from a range of retailers. No label. There you go. The red tractor. Ferraris PCA assured. Outdoor bread free range and organic nearly three times between the cheapest and the dearest so in all honesty just put your hands up would any of you be put off your decision by the price that it actually costs i'd like to choose the one that's been raised the best treated the best but sometimes we can't afford that and we just have to go for whatever bacon we go for I would still go for what I really feel I should buy or what I want to buy and buy less of it. It all comes down to choice and there's no real right or wrong. But when it comes to paying, and be really honest, does your wallet always match your ethics? For some, high welfare is a must. For others, it's a costly luxury. And knowing more about how pork is really produced will help you make the right decision to suit your tastes and your budget.